Hey, and welcome to another Data Structures video. And today we're going to be going over splay trees. Now, the one thing we need to understand about a splay tree is that it does not care about being balanced. There may be times where it happens to be balanced, but generally it won't be, and that's fine. Uh, it has the properties, it still has the properties of a binary search tree, but also we're going to introduce something called splaying. This is a new term for a splay tree. Splaying is when we move any node from its current position all the way to the root, okay? And this is effective because this means that we're going to have a lot of the commonly used items or elements in a tree near the root. And that's what a splay tree is used for. Uh, we want the most commonly used items near the root of the tree so that when we search for um, an element in a splay tree, generally, it's going to be uh, near the root, which is going to reduce the amount of time to search for it. Okay. Uh, now, whenever we need to move a node to the root, we're going to say we're going to be performing a splay operation. So uh, whenever we do something like searching for a node, we are going to uh, perform a splay operation on that node and then move it to the root. Um, but I'll go over that more here in a little bit. So there are several cases for when we do need uh, to do rotations or splay a node to the root of the tree. All right, there are three cases. The first one is called zigzag, and these are somewhat familiar uh, to you if you understand AVL trees. So if we want to perform an operation on, say, node 30, node that has a value 30, okay, we're going to label it X because that's the node that we want to splay. So we're going to perform a splay operation. Its parent, we're going to label Y. And then Y's parent, uh, we're going to label Z, or we say the grandparent of X, we're going to label Z, okay? And we are going to do rotations until X, the operation, the node that we want to uh, move to the root, or that we want to splay, we, had, we perform rotations until it is the root of this tree. So right now, Z is the root, or node 10. So we're going to perform a left rotation, and then another left rotation, and then at the end, X is now the root of the tree, okay? And this is the zigzag. So this is when the X and Y are both left or both right children. The next case is called zigzag. Now, this is when you have X is a left child and Y is a right child or vice versa. Y is a right child, X is a left child. And so the node that we want to display in this case is node value 20. We're going to label it X label its parent y, and then labels y, label y's parent as z. So when we do this, we need to rotate x to the root of this tree. So we perform one, uh, one right rotation, and then we perform a left rotation. And then uh, after, after this, x is now the root of the tree because that was the node we are performing an operation on. OK, so we're gonna, that's a splay operation that we just performed because, again, splaying is moving a node to the root of the tree. In our next case, we have just a zig splay operation. Okay, in this in this instance, there is no grandparent. We basically have two nodes, x and y. This is typically when we're splaying near the root of the tree. Okay, so uh, the node with the value twenty is the node we want to perform the splay operation on. So that's labeled x, and then we label its parent y. Well, in this case, it needs to be the root, so we just do one rotation. A left rotation, and then X is the parent. Okay, now these are the three cases that we're going to be using uh, for all splay operations in a splay tree. So the next thing we need to understand is when do we splay? I've kind of already talked about this, but let's go into some more detail about it. So the first one is searching. So in this uh, in this splay tree, we want to search for thirty nine. I have it highlighted in blue. So we must search for this key. Uh, we found it. So we, we were searching for a key with uh, key 39. We found the node that it's contained in. And now because we found it, we want to splay that to the root, meaning 39 is going to become the new uh, root of this tree. All right. And when we do that, all kinds, we're going to perform rotations on it. And in doing so, the tree is going to look much different. Okay. Now say we search for, uh, say we search for 38. All right. That is not in this tree. So because 38 is not in the tree, 
we would take uh, the leaf node or thirty what would be thirty eight's parent node. So we take the uh, as far down as we can go. Uh, in this case, it's thirty nine. We can't go any further, so we still display thirty nine in this case. All right. So the next operation is insertion. So when we insert a node, anytime you insert a node, you display that to the root of the tree. So in this instance, we want to insert 51, where I have highlighted blue. Uh, because we performed a display operation on 51, we inserted it. We need to move it all the way to the root. So we're just going to keep performing rotations until it becomes the new root of the tree. So the last time we perform a display is when we need to delete a node. Uh, when we delete the node, we take that node's parent and display that to the root of the tree. So for instance, here, uh, I have marked 44. Um, and the reason that's marked is because we want to delete node 39. But we can't slay that node because it's being deleted from the tree. So you take its parent, which is 44, and we splay that to the root of the tree. We just perform rotations, and it becomes the new root of the tree. OK, I hope this helped you learn a little bit more about splay trees. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and I will get back to them and help you as much as I can. All right, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.